was looking at these rat legs that were regenerating, he saw what he identified as stem cells at the site of regeneration. Now, he thought what was happening is that cells at the site of regeneration were de-differentiating, that fibroblasts or red blood cells in, uh, in salamanders and amphibians, the red cells are still nucleated, so that these cells that were floating around in the region of the wound, that they were going backwards in their differentiation, becoming pluripotent cells or stem cells, and that was what was contributing to the growth of the nerve. Well, there's been more recent work on adult stem cells that would imply that most of these adult stem cells, most regeneration in the body, in fact, no matter what's occurring, is coming from adult stem cells that mainly hang out in the bone marrow. So this, again, is not the most beautiful, but you, the green little spots you see here, the, some of the most elegant work with this has been with mice. And what they did is they, were, they found a way to take a green fluorescent protein out of a jellyfish, and through recombinant DNA therapy, they combined it with mouse stem cells. So now you've got fluorescent stem cells. They also found a way to combine a red fluorescent protein with uh, beta-galactosidase, a common enzyme in all cells. And so now you've got these stem cells that have markers for fluorescent proteins in them, and you tie off a coronary artery in the mouse, or you damage its skin, or you damage its muscle, or you damage its aorta, or you damage its lung, or its kidney, or its spleen, or its brain, or anything. And what happens is that when the cells regenerate, they are, the regenerated cells are fluorescent, telling you that those regenerated cells have come from stem cells. Um, this is just a skin that's been damaged, and you see here, these are all dermal cells. These are just normal old dermal cells that are now fluorescent. They no longer look like stem cells. They just look like skin cells. This is just a, a muscle cell. Uh, this is a myocyte that's fluorescent. These are the normal myocytes beside it in an area of muscle injury. These are all from mice. Um, and this is a ganglion cell that's regenerated from areas of nerve damage. These cells are fluorescent. You know they came from that stem cell line. They've lost all the markers of the stem cell lineage they came from. They don't have stem cell markers on them anymore. Um, they just look like the tissue that they're trying to rebuild and regenerate. These are retinal cells that have regenerated. Um, now this, this actually was a little different. These were stem cells taken out of the rat's bone marrow and then injected into the retina. But there have been other studies, this was just the best picture I could find to show this, but there have been other studies where they've actually damaged the retina and just allowed the bone marrow cells to migrate there. You know, we're doing, so this whole, this is a whole new area of medicine of trying to support and promote the functioning of adult stem cells. And so when you read about people excited about adult stem cells, it's from this kind of work, okay? There are, there are no pictures like this from embryonic stem cells. If you take a frog and you inject embryonic stem cells into a frog, you get either uh, nothing, the cells are just some schmutz and the frog clears them away, or they form teratomas and some rather ugly tumors. Because adult stem cells are designed when they divide to make one cell makes one cell. Embryonic stem cells, one cell makes two cells, two cells make four cells. They have uncontrolled differentiation. Adult stem cells, it's the system we were all born with that we were given to allow us to repair and regenerate. And the more that this whole system of regeneration involving adult stem cells is understood, the more we can understand how do you support that system? How do you promote that system? How do you control that system? And so uh, one of the things that uh, now is understood is that microcurrent stimulation changes the local environment and promotes the migration of stem cells to the area that's injured and allows the migration out of the blood vessels into the damaged tissues. And we're doing some other things. There's a product called Stem Enhance, which is an algae extract, which causes an increased circulating level of stem cells. So we'll have people take that an hour, hour and a half before they do the microcurrent therapy. And already we're beginning to see some improvement in our results from this. And I'm sure that now that I understand detoxification and now that I understand a more personalized approach to giving someone supplements, that hopefully we can get that 85% that we got doing it just the kind of dumb way that we knew how to do it, we can get that to 100%. Thank you. Uh, cataracts are really difficult. Um, I, I, I'm almost ready to offer a prize. I mean, I hear about so many things that people say, oh, take this herbal eye drop and this, but I have yet to meet a single person who's had a significant cataract reversed by any kind of therapy. I'm not saying it can't be done. I haven't figured out how to do it. I haven't met anybody. So if you know somebody who had a significant cataract that was actually reversed, I, I'd be curious to hear about it, that was documented. The question is about glaucoma. Um, 
if someone has a very mild glaucoma, you know, it's sort of like high blood pressure. A lot of times glaucoma will respond to the lifestyle change. The same things you would do for somebody with high blood pressure will reduce their pressures. If they have glaucoma and all they need is a little timoptic, you know, a single uh, beta blocker in their eye once a day to control it, I'd say do that for a while uh, rather than, and do the other things to control your health. But where we get involved in people are people who are on four drugs and their pressures are still rising and we can turn that around. That's when I would say get involved in it because you're asking them to do something five days a week, maybe for the rest of their life. There's, you know, uh, 1500 1750 2000 bucks worth of investment to get started. Uh, for simple glaucoma, I don't advise people to do that. But in more severe glaucoma, we've had great results in terms of at least getting them down to maybe one or two drugs and getting their pressures down. We, in this country, most of the work that's been done has been with retinal disease. But I include in there a reference in the handout uh, we found a group of people in Russia that had been using a parallel technology um, that, uh, and there was a, a couple of papers that we had translated. In Russia, the majority of the work was on optic nerve problems, either from glaucoma, trauma, and they report very significant improvements with optic nerve damage and optic nerve disease. Um, and we've had just a chance, to, we don't get referred those people. I think there's a, a great potential for that, it's just not the people that are finding me but there is data out there from the former Soviet Union. In fact, we were going to go see them, but uh, the State Department called us and said, you know, you really don't want to go there because they're having this huge epidemic of uh, totally antibiotic-resistant tuberculosis. We're not going to tell you you can't go, but you probably don't want to go to this part of the Soviet Union, you say. Yeah, you, just, yeah, you can go, but you won't come back. So. <laughs> okay, well, thank you.